introduce the captain of the Premiership team for 1983. Uh, always a, a first favourite here at the World of Sport. Uh, winner of our uh, football highlights today and uh, all the other awards that have uh, gone around. And there's only one of him and uh, he is the best. There's no doubt about that. The skipper, Lee Matthews. And who better to talk with him, the man who... Uh, had such uh, praise for him in our panel, Jack Dyer. Yes, I, I don't often praise fellas, but uh, congratulations, a great game yesterday. Lee, let, let's get down to business now. Uh, now, the lead up to the grand final, what was it like? Can you still sleep at night? And... Well, I think really, uh, I must. I think I was calmer during the week than maybe I expected to be, to be honest. I, I thought after um, Thursday night's training, and there was well, two or three thousand people down at uh, Hawthorne, you know, and it was... I think that's really when the atmosphere starts to build up from that point onwards and of course the grand final parade which I enjoyed immensely. I think it's it's great the way the uh, grand final week and has become such an occasion even more so and uh, and uh, so I just enjoyed the whole involvement really. All right now the, the, the coach has given this speech to you. Listen to him with intently now or not. <laughs> now wait a minute you've had how many speeches you had in your life? About 9,000 million of them yeah. Oh, Do you well, still listen intently? Yeah to I coach? try to look them in the eye because then they think you're listening. Yeah I find. <laughs> But you are a calm underneath it all the time. <clears throat> now, oh, what was his speech now? Yabby would well, be very, very... very I, he didn't really say a great deal yesterday, to be honest, before the match. he, um, I think it had all been said. And I, and I, I think, you know, he's, he, there's not a lot he's going to say in the last five minutes of the match that are going to be terribly pertinent. But, uh, you know, Junji's just been magnificent over the last couple of years, I think, in developing our our side really to be a you know premiership contender and well obviously yesterday went so well that we've we are you know 1983 premiership. Now you got out there you went to a huddle do you speak to the players out there in the huddle? Oh only just brief it was only just a more or less a final uh, well, are we what, all did ready, you you know? what did you say? Well I think the exact words are we all ready are you ready for it? You know, as soon as that <laughs> you know. That all right I was yeah. wondering hoping they weren't going to walk off the ground. Right, were you worried who was going to pick you up? No, I wasn't. I um, someone had said uh, during the week that uh, that Gary Folds may have sort of played in the back pocket, but uh, I certainly wasn't surprised when S Stephen Carey uh, was my direct opponent. Yeah, did uh, any time did um, the um, the uh, Ruck Rover pick you up for me? <laughs> yeah, at one stage only for a few seconds there when uh, when Stephen and, uh, Carey went down, I think hurt his shoulder in the centre of the ground, and Tim Watson as a good teammate should do, um, you know, came and sort of picked up a loose forward in myself. Now, at any stage, were you worried? Now, I believe that at three-quarter time, you first had a look at the scoreboard. <laughs> now, well, I think, you know, you obviously worried early. I mean, I think we had a lot of the play in the first quarter, but we kicked poorly, and, uh, you know, it was 5-6. They'd kicked four goals straight, and that the match was still in the balance. It, you know, had a terrific second quarter. And I think uh, at half time, I suppose one should say, uh, providing we did, had made uh, no bad mistakes, we should have gone on and won the match. And I think it was critical. We kicked a couple of early goals in the third quarter, and I think from that point onwards, we virtually had the match. Just one moment there. Do you want to say something? Jack, I, I, there was a little uh, something I was going to mention in the introduction to Lee. I was on the arena yesterday, and when the Hawthorne team came out, the cheer squad got the banner in position. But the heavy wind that was blowing there actually tore the banner and things were a bit amiss. The players moved to move away and to do their lap and the captain, Lee Matthews, called them back and they stood in a little group waiting for the kids to get the banner reorganised, which I thought was a, a very nice thing indeed, particularly with all the pressure on grand final day. And I also want to say thanks to Lee Matthews because in the hurly-burly after the game, uh, Stephen Phillips was down there and we were on relay all around the world and uh, Lee Matthews, I mentioned the professionalism of the two clubs in their attitude towards television during the week and never was it more obvious at the end of the game yesterday when Lee Matthews went straight to the microphone and the camera to do the after-match interview which is a very important part of television but it was a big occasion and we do appreciate it Lee and it just demonstrates the professionalism we were talking about earlier. Thanks, all champions are like that, Ron. <laughs> yeah. all the same, I was going to say actually I'm going to t leading a Super Bowl uh, two over to see the Super well, Bowl. I, about that, yes. I thought if I was on the international TV, I'd probably get mobbed at the airport now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just mention my name when you go overseas, Lee. Listen, Incidentally, Jack, Jack, do you reckon he was rough? No, I thought he played the game very fairly on Saturday. As a matter of fact, you surprised me just a fraction, you didn't? Just a fraction. Because <laughs> they hit you back these guys, Jack. Yeah. That's a trouble. Did you call him playing nicely yesterday? Yes, I thought he was a very nice player yesterday. I, I thought that you did everything right. Everything happened for you. Yeah. 
Right. Sometimes in football something happens for you, and it happened for you yesterday. Lee, that when, mark, you couldn't take that. Lee, I think when, what happened is I had a wonderful bunch of teammates there. Yeah, so Lee, when Wallace went down that time with that injury, the poke in the eye, yes. now was he okay to kick the ball? Or they just, did you decide yeah. what between did the say? I'll kick it. Uh, well, I can recall back to uh, the last time, no, the, early in the season we played Essendon yeah. at um, Princess Park, and I took a mark not too far out from goal and uh, you were got stunned. a whack as I as I marked it, and I knew I wasn't really in the you know the best frame right, so I didn't want to kick the ball. I knew. Michael Moncrief would be there hovering <laughs> to take it for me. He's been such a good kick, and I thought I'll try that trick, so I was just hanging around there. Well, I'll say you were hanging around. Yeah, You'd yeah. never move one it's inch. All right, there. someone else gets a well, kick you're for talking you. to him. I was talking to the umpire. <laughs> Listen, give me the ball. Give me Lee, the ball. we'd love you to have this monocraft, uh, Thanks, beautiful uh, diary there with your name on the bottom. Also, the Thomas Hardy Grand Reserve Champagne. Also, for you and your wife, a lovely uh, weekend at the Mildura Country Club. And there's also a bit of spending money to go with that. Thanks, I think you'll enjoy yourself. And here we have this magnificent fruit bowl. This is Danish Crystal. Very and nice. that goes home to your wife. This is presented to you on behalf of uh, Channel 7 and all the people here at World of Sport. We'd like to thank you for all your help you've given us all the year.